Hello there, everybody. It is me, Waddles, here. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to my tutorial series where I teach you stuff about this game. And I'm guessing that you are here today to learn how to make a skeleton zombie farm. Skeleton or zombie farm grinder. Whatever you want to call them. And that is what I'm going to show you how to make today. This is a really simple design. We're going to bring them down to one or two hits with a sword. And then you'll have loads of whatever drop that mob that you are farming drops. So uh, this is a really old design. So it should work in pretty much every version of Minecraft. 1.10, 1.11, etc. and so on. This design should work on every single platform of this game. It's pretty basic. No redstone involved very very simple so if you have any questions with the tutorial you're confused leave a comment I will do my best to get back to you as fast as possible leave a like if you liked this video and hey maybe even subscribe if you really liked this video check out some of my other tutorials if you lose your place or are ready to move on to the next step timestamps will be in the description without any more delay let's get right into this tutorial so what do you need to make this farm what you need is 16 or so signs. It's a rough estimate. Have some signs handy. Have at least two water buckets. The more water buckets you have, the faster and easier it will be. Have torches, have a pickaxe, and if you're doing zombies, have something like a magma block or netherrack or something like that. You'll see why later on in the video. So I sadly do not have any spawners in that super flat world. So I'm over here in a new world and I have found a spawner right down here. We have a zombie spawner. So that's what we're going to use for the video. Again, it'll work with skeletons or zombies. So what you want to do first is light up the caves around your spawner and your spawner room. You don't want any surprise creepers blowing up your creation midway through the project. It's very, very frustrating. Check your loot. What do you have? Ooh, we got some good loot. That's cool. If not, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Clear the room out and then I like to box the room in. Now I would simply box it in if I was worried about things breaking what I am doing. But if you're brave, you don't need to do that. Step two is creating a four by four room around this spawner, or I should say nine by nine. You want to dig four directions out in every direction from this spawner here. So I have four out this way, four out this way, four out that way, and four out that other way. Then you want to put your wall in. If you didn't do that just a minute ago, you actually need a wall now. It is important that you have this wall in here. Now these spawners, meaning zombie and skeleton spawners, will spawn in an 8x8x3 eight by eight by block radius. So meaning 8 blocks in the X and Z and 3 blocks in the Y coordinates. But when you're digging this room out, be conscious of light level. So we've got our 9x9 nine nine room. It's all lit up so we're not going to get any spawns. Now the ceiling. The ceiling doesn't necessarily matter. Like I said, three is the amount of spawning space that these things have in the Y coordinates. I usually will say if you can stand on top of the spawner and jump, or if you can stand on the spawner and jump and hit your head right away, you're good. Put a slab on top of the spawner. This is going to prevent that annoying zombie from standing on top of the spawner and never moving. Now you want to dig three down in this whole room. And again, stay aware of how dark it is going to get near the bottom of this thing. Throw torches on the wall. You don't necessarily need to dig three down. You can dig two down, but the problem with digging two down is when we put the water on this block, mobs can float and kind of get stuck and slow down on this spawner. They'll eventually keep floating underneath the spawner, but it'll slow your rates down ever so slightly. So that's why I'm saying dig three down dug three down now so the measurements of my room are nine by seven by nine seven up and down that is so what you want to do now is pick a way you want to push your mobs if your house is say the direction i'm facing that's what i would recommend pushing them but it really doesn't matter i for this tutorial will push the mobs to this wall but like i said doesn't matter but whatever wall you pick to push the mobs to, dig down one more along that whole wall like I just did. And what I recommend to do, not a required step, but dig into that wall a little bit like I'm doing here and make a four or two by two space and make an infinite water source. This is going to come in handy here 
but don't do this right in the middle of the wall. Do it like I did it, you know, offset from the corner or along the corner. Just do it at this side of the room if you're gonna do it at all. A little bit more digging that you're gonna do, you're gonna find the middle of that trench and dig down one, one more, and then dig forwards four or or I mean three from that block you're standing on and three up so you have this hallway looking thing just like that so for now we're done with digging now we get to do the very tedious thing of adding water in this is where all of those buckets come in handy if you have loads of buckets then cool good for you it'll be way easier so no matter your bucket count what you want to do is put water along the back wall the back wall is the wall opposite of that trench you were just digging your water should all be a current pointing one direction towards the trench if it's not like that is something's off somewhere maybe you missed some water but line the back wall like that you have all of your mobs now being pushed to this trench so have a sign ready and throw a sign right there at the middle block where your head would be on this lower part and then go to either side of this spawning room on this lower trench and break one block so hopefully your block is not floating over nothing if it is fix that and throw a water in there you want the water to then push everything towards this middle trench so do the same thing on the other side throw water in there the sign is stopping the water from flowing down into here we don't really want that so all of your current should be pushing everything to this middle spot if you really are unsure throw an item and watch it get pushed to the middle spot but what you want to do now is one more bucket of water right there right beneath that sign pushing the water down to the back of this this hallway we'll call it so like I said in the beginning of this tutorial, we want these mobs down to one or two hits. You don't want to waste a billion swords trying to just grind things for a bunch of zombie flesh, for a bunch of bone for the wonderful bone blocks. So to get these mobs down to that hit, what I usually do is dig three back from where this water ends. Don't, don't dig it so the water pushes things, but go one up and dig three back, four back, however many back you want. We're creating the room you're going to stand in to grind these things. You want to be able to make sure, though, that when you're in whatever room you put, the mob grinder is on. You can see on my screen that the fire is on. That means the grinder's on. But if I step further away and I see the fire go away, like where I am now, you can just see it. There's no more fire, so that's not going to work. You need the grinder to be on. So anyways, though, once you find that block, I say put a different block. I put a cobblestone block and get the coordinates of that block. Type them in chat is what I will usually do or write them on a piece of paper. Get the X, Y, and Z, but most importantly, your Y coordinate, minus 38. So 38 is my Y coordinate. What you want to do is add 23 or 22 to that number. 38 plus 22 happens to be 60 plus 23 would be 61. What significance is 23 or 22? Mobs can fall 23 blocks without dying. You drop them 24 blocks, they die on impact. If you want to just collect their items, let them die on impact. That's all good. I recommend, though, dropping them 22 blocks. Because if they take a little bit of damage in this room, somehow, who knows, then they're just going to fall and die. I like to personally get the XP from these farms too, but this is where it's your call. If you want to drop them 25 blocks, they should die on impact unless they have armor on. But I'm doing 22 for this farm. If it's kind of confusing, just copy what I did and do 22 blocks. But if you understand what I'm saying, you need to add 22 to this Y coordinate. That is where we're going to make the top of this falling shoot so things will fall and then you can just grind them. So with all of that crazy math, that crazy stuff being done, fill back in that hall that you dug to find wherever you're going to drop them on and dig a new hall to get back into your spawning room. This is where this water source comes in handy because we're about to raise these mobs 22 blocks up into the air and then drop them over. So what you want to do is float down this little hallway, put a sign right at head level. So you're looking right at the sign and go diagonal above it. The wall doesn't necessarily matter here, but put them on the same wall. It just makes it a little more organized, a little more clean. And if you have baby zombies, they will get stuck in this system. You want to dispose of the baby zombies. So what I'll usually do is what I just did. Put a magma block. It, you'll hear them dying, but they'll eventually die. 
because they won't be able to climb up this elevator. This elevator is really only fit for two tall things like a player. So kill the baby zombie somehow. If you don't want to use your magma block, you can put a sign here and just dig down 25 blocks so they'll fall and die. It's up to you. We just want to dispose of the baby zombies. If you have a skeleton grinder, you're in luck. You don't have to worry about it. The elevator is pretty easy to make. You want to raise these mobs, so what you want to do is above the two signs or, you know, in this corner of the two signs, put a water bucket so it's floating there, not running anywhere. Then dig above it, and what you want to do is float up, place a sign, and continue that all the way till you reach that Y coordinate. So my coordinate is 60, so I'm going to dig up and raise this elevator all the way till it is 60. Now you want to end on a water block, so if 60 is where this sign is, don't go above it and put a water, because if you're doing 23, then that's 24 blocks that they're going to fall and they're, they're going to die. So get as close to the number that you need, but don't go above it. Now that you've dug in up to that coordinate that you needed, the Y coordinate, minus 60, yours is whatever it is. You've created a really simple elevator. This is a very, very, very basic elevator, but it's a mob elevator nonetheless. The mobs will just naturally move straight up that elevator that you just created. But the next thing you need to do is move the mobs over to that spot where you want to grind them. So mine was 238, 286. You don't need the Y coordinate. But you want to dig towards that other spot. So for me, this is that spot, 2, 286. So your water trench should just move over to it naturally. And what you want to do is once you're on that spot, throw a sign down. Yes, another sign. But you should have something that looks like this now. This moves the mobs right over to where they're going to fall. Now you just need to dig this downwards. Now, honestly, you should never dig just straight down. So what I recommend to do is, assuming you're in survival mode, dig two out here. One past that sign. And stand on this block, dig two down, then dig two down here and then look back up and fill in that extra block. But you wanna dig all the way down into your room. So do that somehow. If you're really risky, you'll dig just straight down. Hopefully you don't die, but you should land right back on that block. If you do, that is perfect. So now you wanna just block off the top block so the mobs can't walk around in this room. That would be an absolute disaster. Very bad, very terrible, very not fun at all. So now you're about ready to start knocking torches out. But before you do that, get rid of this water source. You don't need that here anymore at all. Fill in that water source. Make sure all of this looks all good. For me, it looks all perfect and fine. So now you get to remove torches. This is no fun. And with skeletons, it can be very hard. So what I recommend is start at the back of the room. Start by knocking the torches out at the back and then just kind of move with the water, slowly punching out the other torches. And don't forget any that you put on the spawner. As you're breaking these torches out, things will begin to spawn and that is good. So break all the torches out, then quickly get back into your room block it all up once you have confirmed that all of the torches are gone. So now your mobs should begin falling into here. Now you just wanna make sure that one, they aren't dying. As you can see, these zombies aren't dying when they're falling, so that is right. Now you can test and see if your grinder is good with a wooden sword. The wooden sword should kill the exact one that you hit and swipe damage the other ones. Now stone swords should do the exact same thing. They should kill the mobs with one swipe, same with iron and same with anything else, but you can use wooden swords with this thing and not have to waste your diamond sword. I usually use a stone sword and I'll enchant the stone sword or an iron sword. One of those two just because that's how I do things. But your whole grinder is all set up. This is the room that I would advise you make some kind of storage system in here. Maybe you put a hopper that they're falling onto and put a chest. Make a storage thing in here. Maybe put an enchantment setup in here. Make this room real nice and fancy. That's what I usually do. Throw a bed in here. Maybe you want to put a window into that spawning room. However you want to do, it's all up to you now to improve the rates of this spawning room get rid of dark areas go light up all the caves go light up the surface put water all over the surface find one in the middle of an ocean but you want to reduce the amount of space other zombies and other mobs can spawn there is a mob spawn cap 
and there also is a mob cramming rule so if you afk this thing and without a hopper there eventually this thing will get very full and things will just die on impact that is completely normal so keep that in mind if you're going to afk this thing you really do need to put a hopper there or it will get very pointless pretty fast my favorite type of grinder with these things is a skeleton grinder personally but zombie ones are nice to have as well and so that is your grinder your farm hopefully that works very well for you like i said at the beginning though if you got confused in here leave a comment i confuse myself sometimes everyone gets confused sometimes just ask the question i'll try my best to get back to you leave a like if it helped you even subscribe if you really enjoyed this i do a lot of other tutorials i have a let's play series where I use this design actually for my grinding purposes. But I hope it all works out for you and I hope this tutorial was detailed enough and to the point enough for you. So thank you so much for watching. This has been Waddles. I will see you around. Goodbye.